Welcome to the construct module for the emotion regulation construct. In this module, we will review the research background and the rationale for including this construct in the K3 formative assessment. Then we will discuss the assessment materials for this construct, which include the progression itself with examples of the skills as well as the assessment means form. Emotion regulation, or being able to control one's emotions, involves initiating, inhibiting, or modulating one's feelings. It plays a fundamental role in children's thought and behavior in the school context and underlies a range of critical school-related skills. Emotion regulation is what allows young children to stay focused and engaged throughout their school day, where they are likely to encounter a number of challenges, such as taking turns, using classroom materials, or coping with hurt feelings when not performing as expected during a learning or social game. There is research that finds children who successfully manage emotions are more likely to be successful in school. For example, children who have greater self-regulation in kindergarten tend to be more skilled in reading and math in later grades. Being emotionally regulated supports success in school by its impact on focus and attention, planning and finishing tasks, persisting and maintaining motivation to be engaged with tasks and activities, and having positive relationships with peers. When children regulate their emotions, they are better able to participate in their learning environment. The ability to regulate emotions, however, is not necessarily a self-taught skill. Children often need support when learning to regulate emotions and are able to increasingly employ learned or suggested strategies over time, moving from more reactionary behaviors to more reflective ones. This construct progression focuses on the child's use of strategies to regulate emotions and related behavior. When we refer to strategies, we are referencing the ways in which children learn to manage their own emotions. The end result might be a change in intensity of emotion, change in the emotion itself, or both. Strategies can be verbal techniques, such as talking oneself through a difficult task. They can be physical, such as moving away from something that is causing distress. They can be cognitive, so thinking about something in a new way so one doesn't feel bad. Or it could be a combination of strategies or strategy types. Note that there is an emphasis on the word learned. We generally don't expect children to teach themselves how to regulate emotions, although they may discover ways to regulate their emotions without help from others. This progression focuses on the ways in which others are instrumental in supporting the child to learn and use strategies. It might be informal support, such as telling the child to move away from her friend if she feels herself getting frustrated, or it might be a more formally taught strategy, such as setting up a reward system or an interactive lesson on paying attention to one's own emotional state. Given that the experience of emotions is internal, we may not always be able to observe emotion regulation. It is okay to ask the child what he or she was doing or thinking if it is unclear whether he or she had regulated an emotion. The first understanding reflects the child's understanding that verbal and nonverbal strategies, including external support by a teacher, parent, or peer, can be used to regulate the experience of emotions and the expression of emotions. The first two skills that correspond to this understanding are about what a child can do in terms of regulating his or her emotions with support, with the difference between skills A and B being the level of support. Skill A, when offered strategies for regulating the expression of emotions, begins to use the strategies offered with continual support. We use the term begins to to capture the children who benefit from a lot of support during the day for regulating their emotions. It's not that they can't regulate their emotions, but they rely heavily on support for doing so. You will find that the child might not always respond to your support right away, or need several strategies offered before one works for him or her. This also captures children who need a lot of support from setting to setting. Skill B, when offered strategies for regulating the expression of emotion, consistently uses the strategies offered with minimal support. For this skill, the children are pretty good at regulating with support. They typically respond immediately to the support and adjust behavior accordingly. For example, they might only need one reminder to keep their excited voice low during an activity rather than continuous reminders. The difference between this skill and the previous skill is that children do not need constant support. They are able to largely regulate their emotions but still require some support during the activity, task, or transition. The example provided in this skill is a much more explicit type of strategy offered. Here, the teacher has taught his class a nonverbal cue to engage in a breathing technique intended to calm a student down. 
In the example, he taps his chest to signal his student, Aubrey, to use the technique when she becomes visibly frustrated during small group work. She responds to the cue and uses the technique. Understanding 2. Children understand that a variety of learned verbal and nonverbal strategies can be used flexibly to regulate the expression of emotions. The three remaining skills correspond to this understanding. In these skills, children begin to use emotion regulation strategies independently and across settings. Skill C. Sometimes uses learned strategies independently to regulate expression of emotions during routine activities. In the previous skill, the child needed support. Even though the child is responsive to the teacher offering a strategy, he really doesn't do it independently in skill B. Here in skill C, this is where we see independent use of strategies with the occasional reminder. You might see examples of this during certain settings or times of day, such as needing more reminders during high energy activities like recess or gym, or at the end of the day right before going home. This skill should also capture children who are using a limited range of strategies or who cannot execute strategies for regulating emotions effectively. In the example here, the teacher, Mrs. Chow, observes a student using the ask three, then ask me strategy, rather than interrupting her while she is working with other students. You can see here that Amy has used a strategy independently. In order for Amy to be placed here, rather than in the next skill, the teacher would also have to observe that Amy still needed support at other times. Skill D consistently uses learned strategies independently to regulate the expression of emotions during routine activities. Children who are at skill D are pretty consistent in being able to regulate the expression of emotions in their everyday environment. What sets this apart from the previous skill C is really the frequency in which children need support. If the child rarely needs support, they would best be characterized by skill D. If support depends on the context, such as recess versus reading, or changes daily as he or she is trying out their emotion regulation skills, then you would place them or her at skill C. This skill also captures most children who do not display strategy use in an obvious way, but maintain an outward regulated state throughout the day. In the first example under D, the teacher sees Reese using a skill for monitoring her emotional state, such as comparing her feelings to a revving engine and then taking action. The teacher observes Reese going to the reading corner after recess. After talking with her, the teacher confirms that she went to the reading corner to calm her engine. As I mentioned, you would want to look for Reese using learned strategies in other settings and probably on other days to confirm that she is, in fact, consistently regulating her emotions independently. Skill E independently uses learned strategies for regulating emotions during complex contextual transitions to accomplish a different or new type of task because of interruptions, or because of changes in the daily routines. This last skill E characterizes children who are able to regulate emotions even in really complex or unusual situations. For children that appear to be even keeled, even when most other children are needing to regulate, they would be considered here as skill E. For example, you might have a child who can keep it together for the majority of the day, but becomes upset when his field trip is canceled and need help reframing the upsetting event so he doesn't feel as bad. This child would not be placed here at skill E, but would be better placed in the previous skill D. Our example here describes a child who becomes frustrated when the fire alarm sounds during computer lab, but the teacher sees her taking a deep breath and asking for assurance that she can finish later. Some children will not appear to be regulating their emotions and therefore may be more difficult to place in the progression. There could be a number of reasons why these children are more difficult to assess, including mastery of emotion regulation skills, having a high threshold of emotional arousal, or overuse of avoidance strategies. It is important not to assume that the child is well enough equipped with emotion regulation skills simply because the child does not appear to be unregulated. For these children, you will likely need to conference with them in order to determine if they do have and use a variety of emotion regulation strategies and are not avoiding the emotional arousal altogether. As a general rule of thumb, if you observe a child to be mostly avoidant and occasionally needing support when avoidance does not work, the child would be at a skill C. If you observe a child to be regulated throughout the day and avoidance is not their only source of strategy use, the child would be at skill D. 
you observe a child to be regulated, even when his or her peers are having difficulty maintaining regulation, or you know the child is experiencing more intense emotional arousal during an unexpected event, the child would be at a skill E. The assessment means form for emotion regulation, as seen here, includes information a teacher can use when he or she is ready to begin assessing for this construct. The top of the form includes a reminder that teachers should try to assess children in the most naturalistic environment possible. There are no situations or tasks for emotion regulation, as it would be difficult and potentially unethical to try to evoke intense or unnatural feelings that need to be regulated. Teachers should be able to observe children regulating emotions throughout their day, as emotion is inherently tied to almost every activity or task encountered throughout the day. There is also information here about the development of this particular construct instructions on how and where to potentially observe students demonstrating these skills, as well as some potential materials you could use in your assessment. There is a note about how to record evidence and place children on the progression and examples taken directly from the construct progression form. These are a quick reference for teachers and serve as a reminder of the skills in this progression. We cover how teachers can document their evidence for each construct progression on documentation forms and in the platform in a separate module. We do want to point out that we have developed watch fors for each construct, which are brief reminders and keywords that help differentiate the skill levels on the progression. These can be found on the documentation forms as shown here. Being successful in regulating emotions often depends on the use of strategies, which can be supported by teachers and peers. This progression, which is in the social emotional domain, consists of five skills ranging from regulating with a lot of support to regulating independently. Thank you for your time today. We hope you learned everything you need to know about the emotion regulation construct and are ready to begin assessing.